Yeah. Like yeah. Joke's on. Off right now. Oh. So just uh, give it a crank because it's kind of warm right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Randy Post. We're here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin at the Throttle Stop. And today, I present you a unicorn. This Suzuki motorcycle, the RE5, is one in a million. And we're going to take a look at it and take it for a ride. Something I've always wanted to do and never had the opportunity until now. Now, why does this motorcycle exist? Well, in the late 60s and early 70s, there was a fascination with the rotary engine. And the engine is the heart and soul of any motorcycle. That's part of why we motorcycle people like them. The engine is what gives it its personality, not just its appearance, but yeah, the look and the feel and the way it vibrates and the way it produces power and the way it acts when you shift gears. That's what makes a motorcycle a motorcycle, what gives it its personality. And in the late 60s, all machines were looking at the rotary engine. It was the, gonna be the next great wave in propulsion. And one of the incredible things about a rotary is that it only has two moving parts. There is a triangular rotor that is offset driving a crankshaft, and that's it. So simplicity of design was one of the great features of the rotary. And the car manufacturers were looking at it. The Corvette flirted with it for years. And Suzuki, they, somebody there in the early 70s was very creative, and they were willing to take risk and go in a direction that nobody else did. The rotary engine presented a lot of challenges to the engineers at Suzuki to make practical for daily use. Challenges mean complexity. And there were so many subsystems working that the light and compact rotary became heavy and large and complicated. There were very few manufacturers attempting a rotary engine, and only a couple that were ever made. There's something called a Hercules W2000 that came out of Europe, Germany, Austria, and Suzuki brought it to market. It's just like no other motorcycle in the world. It looks like no other motorcycle in the world. It even sounds like no other motorcycle in the world. And the thing, the rotary engine Suzuki. Rotary engine power, smoothness, simplicity. The rotary engine Suzuki, like no other motorcycle in the world. Suzuki built big, comfortable bikes with kind of a touring emphasis. That's the way the GT750 water-cooled two-stroke was. And the RE5 kind of had a lot of the same personality and the same parts. I mean, like a dual disc brake front end. 
This was still kind of a new thing. It was very much a wow factor of motorcycles in the 70s, dual disc. And the, uh, the forks, the frame, the styling was all like a normal Japanese motorcycle of the day. Big, long, comfy touring seat. The uh, <laughs> typical chrome shocks and swing arm, just all very much a typical appearing Japanese motorcycle until you got to the engine, the wankel rotary. The exhaust system is an interesting feature on this bike. Rotaries put out a very hot exhaust. I remember this from the rotary race cars I've been around. The exhaust system is a huge problem. One, keeping it quiet. They're very loud because they're firing so often. And two, they're very hot for the same reason. So the exhaust system is cooled. There's a thinned manifold right here in the center. And then look at these air intakes. The exhaust system is double walled and it's actually taking air as it rides down the road and just running it down the exhaust system to help cool the whole thing right out the back. Very creative and part of the engineering that Suzuki had to uh, use to make a rotary engine work in a motorcycle. Back in the 70s, they'd call them a standard bike. I should have hidden, that's just what they were. Before the sport bikes where you lean over like crazy, or the cruisers where you lean back with these high bars. The styling was conventional Japanese motorcycle, and it looked a lot like the other Suzuki models, except for the gauges and the taillight. This tin can design was done by famous industrial designer Giorgetto Gijaro. And now, it's the coolest thing. Back in the day, it was downright weird. But look at this, you turn on the ignition, bloop, it pops right open. And then the taillight echoes the same design, combined with unique turn signals that were, were globes. No other bike looked like this, and guess what? No other bike had an engine like this. Wow, what a ride. I got to try a Suzuki RE5. I've always wanted to, and I was impressed with the smoothness and the power. This bike is actually quick. And you can see the videos and many more at the Throttle Stop YouTube page, Instagram, Facebook. It's a great place and an amazing opportunity for me to try out an incredible machine released just about the time I got out of high school.